Okay, uh, probably this is going to be my last live on a mannequin. I'm going to be going back to real models, which would be kind of nice. But uh, we just thought we'd do a cheeky look um, Facebook, Instagram live and, uh, you know, give you some inspiration of what uh, Edge Academy has all been about. Uh, this is a brand new haircut I've been working on. Um, you know, we haven't launched a ladies collection this year, but I wanted to do something a little bit different. I've been playing around in the academy. Uh, believe it or not, we've been pretty busy with classes. Thank the Lord. Uh, we've, uh, we've been pretty busy. We've had um, a lot of in-salon classes, a lot of in-person classes, and our class, classes recently have been sold out uh, every single month. Uh, going from one day, two days and three days education here at the Academy. So uh, things are picking up for the education side. We've also got plans of travelling out of state. So we've got uh, an opportunity to go to Montana and uh, that's going to be in September. We're just looking at some dates in September. So if any of you are tuning in and you live in Montana, we will be going up that way. And we're also going to Atlanta. Uh, that's all been planned now. That's in the middle of September. We're going to be two days in Atlanta uh, doing uh, six haircuts hands-on. All right. So if you live in the Atlanta market, uh, we've also got pending uh, New Jersey and also an international trip going to Norway. All right. I've not been to Norway for many, many years. So we uh, might be going to Norway in November. All right. Uh, so what we wanted to just give it a few seconds just to get a lot of people on. Uh, this is a live, it will be uh, saved. So if you're in the salon and you're like, damn, I can't watch it all, uh, I will post it so you can watch it. This is a really good haircut, guys, because I've been playing around with it for a while. This haircut is going to be a short haircut. As you can see with the mannequin, it's already short. Uh, and this haircut is going to be like a shaggy pixie. All right, you've heard of the shag haircut. Lots of layers, it's been very popular. We did the, the shag haircut, what, about three or four years ago now? And it's got more popular and more popular and consumer driven now. What consumer driven means is a client comes in and says, I want a shag, all right? Before it was fashion driven and it was hairdresser driven. But now a consumer, you know, a client actually knows what a shag haircut is. And a shag haircut is lots of layers. It can have a curtain bang, it can have a, diff a wide fringe, it can be open up and then look like a mullet. And that's where you start to see lots of inspiration over the last 12 months of the mullet, the shag, lots of layers. Um, another key haircut which I see a lot of is the French bob. All right, a bob which is shorter, giving a little bit more volume. Uh, think of the Queen's Gambit, uh, you know, that, a great little haircut there. But this haircut, what we're going to do is like a grown out pixie. So think about if you've got a client in the chair and she's had a pixie or a crop and she wants to grow it out. Or it's the opposite, where you've got a client who's got a bob. Yeah, she's got a bob, she's had a bob for a while, she's had layers, she's had it short at the back, she's had it long at the front, she's had it reverse, she's had fringes, and she just wants something fresh and exciting. Uh, and that's what we're going to take you through. It's called a shaggy pixie. All right. If you don't want, if you want to get away from this shaggy word like shaggy pixie, then you could just say grown out pixie. All right. It's a little bit more lived in. All right. So it's not really short. All right. So I sectioned it off to make it a bit quicker for everybody. All right. Uh, any dates for Orange County? Uh, we are in San Diego, so unfortunately we haven't got anything up in Orange County at the moment. But uh, you know, if we can get a few people up there to do a class. We'll, uh, we'll easily come up, it's not far Orange County to us. San Diego, we have classes all the time, but Orange County, we would love to come up there and do a class. So, you know, if you want to DM us privately, uh, and we can maybe schedule a call and tell you how our education works, how many people we need to cover the cost of our travel, we can do that. So if any of you are salon owners and you want to get us in your salon, you know, we are traveling uh, and we are doing, you know, back on the road. All right, so let's take you through the haircut. That's what the whole um, quick kind of demonstration is this morning, is just to inspire you all, all right? I love to share. I love to tell you what's happening within our academy, what's, what's trendy, what's hot. Um, you know, I'm a cutting specialist, and, uh, and that's what we've been doing a lot of, is obviously working with our collections. We've got our moving collection, 
And then also we've got our 20th Century Boys, which is our boys collection. So this haircut uh, is not in any collection. I've just been playing around with it in the academy. It's a new kind of shape. Uh, so it's hot for you guys. No one, I've, never, I've never really done it on, on a Facebook Live yet. So it's brand new uh, and I hope you like it. All right, so how do we do it? Right, so you can do a centre parting all the way down the head. So a profile from the forehead down to the nape. Then you put a parting from the top of the head to the top of the ear. All right, so, top of the, so you're splitting the hair into four sections. Centre and then top of the head to the ear, okay? Then what you're gonna do then, you're gonna go on the, from, the, from the parting and the sides, you're gonna go a diagonal forward, okay? So it's going diagonal forward. The highest part being above the curvature of the head. So if I put the comb flat on my mannequin, the highest part of the triangle, because that's what we're creating here, is a triangle section on the side. So the point of the triangle, yeah, is at the top of the curve of the head. So if you put the comb flat on the head, the highest part of the head there, the curve, yeah, is literally the highest point. Then we're going diagonally down to the corner of the eyebrow. All right, so corner of the eyebrow. If you prefer to say recession areas, then you can go high, mid, or low. Again, all depends on the density of your hair and your client's hair type. All right, this is what I'm, I love about creativity haircuts. Yeah, it's, I give you an idea and then it's very open for you to play around with. All right, it's not a make me to dictate. I'm just here to share some inspiration. You might like it, you might hate it. It's just inspiration, guys, all right? And that's what I love about creativity, all right? You make it your haircut, not my haircut, all right? So as you can see then, we've got a diagonal forward, and then from that, pop, from that top of that triangle, we've got a diagonal back. So what that's doing, it's creating a, a large triangle through the sides, okay? So a triangle through the sides. The top of the triangle is parallel to the ear. All right, so where that parting would be, here, then you go and make a triangle. Guess what? You do exactly the same on the opposite side. <laughs> All right, so exactly the same on the opposite side. All right, just to give you a little bit of a, an idea. So diagonal, forward, diagonal, back, and creating that cheeky little triangle. All right, so when you come and look in a mirror, and you get your mirror, and you look in a the mirror, then the top of the triangle should be symmetrical, so it's at the curve of the head, and then the bottom of the triangle is at the corner of the eyebrow, so again, symmetrical, and then literally working back into the back. Now we're going to the back, what do we do in the back? We work to triangle. You can either make it very pointy, or you can make it a little bit curved. Again, personally up to you. All right, so how high do you go in the back below the crown? How do you find below the crown? So if I put my client on a profile, I'll put the comb flat on the head, then I start to find below the crown. So below the crown, and we've gone diagonal forward, diagonal forward to create a third triangle, okay? So that's how we've done it. So I literally worked a triangle on the side, a triangle on the opposite side, and then a triangle through the back, okay? So if you're just tuning in, this is a grown out pixie we're gonna approach. Uh, a shaggy pixie, a lived-in pixie, something like that, okay? Uh, lots of people saying hello. My hairdressing students are watching too. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Katrina. All right, it's lots of people saying hello. People from uh, Belgium. How are you? We've got Belgium tuning in. We've got people from all over the US. Give us a shout out where you are, and I'll give you a wave or I'll give you a little shout out while I'm cutting. Right, so we're going to start on the sides. Okay, we're going to start with the top of the ear. All right, so we're going to start in the middle of the triangle. Okay, so in the middle of the triangle, and we're going to work a vertical section all the way through. We're going to take this area shorter. And why we're taking it shorter, when you're growing something out, when a lady's growing her hair out, say for example, this is a grown out pixie, a grown out kind of shape, a lived in shape. So if she's cutting this off from a bob and she wants it a little bit more lived in and playful, where does it grow out the most? All right, think about the head shape. The widest part of anybody's head, if I put a comb flat and I work it to the head, where does it hit first? The top of the ear. Because the head starts to curve round at the front and curve round at the back. 
because the head is round or oval, different shape, face shapes. But at the end of the day, yeah, the widest part is usually at the top of the ear. So what we're doing here on the, on the sides is we're taking out the weight through the side. So we're not going to get a lot of width with this haircut. The client says, I hate it when my hair grows out. I feel like I've got a bowl. I don't like it when my hair grows out. I'm trying to grow it out, a lived in kind of pixie. So what we're going to do is we're going to take out the weight where, it's, where it sits the most. So the top of the ear. Okay, so I'm going to work a vertical section as wide as my comb. So two fingers depth or as wide as your comb, whatever you prefer to say. All right, so I like to just say wide as the comb. Okay. So then if I go on a profile, you'll be able to see the section. All right, so as wide as the comb from the center, from the top of the triangle all the way down to the hairline. And my distribution now and elevation is 90. All right, I'm gonna bring that straight out from the head at 90, okay? It's coming straight out from the head and I'm gonna cut this shorter, okay? So I'm gonna blunt cut it. Why? Because it's a little bit more shorter. It's not, it's not, not too lived in, okay? So I'm gonna cut that all blunt. So my distribution, elevation is 90. I'm doing a technique called palm to palm. So I'm actually working my, through my palm and then my palm, all right, my elevation is 90 from the head, 90 from the head, okay? And you've just done one section all the way through. All right, I wanna get the balance right on both sides, okay? So I'm gonna do exactly the same on the opposite side. All right, balance is really important to make sure that you get the right balance throughout. So instead of completing one side and then approaching this side and guessing the balance, let's get it absolutely perfect. So we go back through this side, a vertical section, top of the ear. We lift it out, 90 from the head. And guess what? You've got to guess, kind of feel how much you put off there. So what another little trick is, is you can get your comb and you can check the balance and you can check your balance and the, see how long it is. This is our famous orange edge comb. And guess what? It's a ruler, all right? It's inches on the, on the spine. So if you've never seen this comb before, it's from our Edge Academy here in San Diego, designed by Edge, and it's an eight inch comb. So it's got eight inches all the way down the spine. So when I come to check the balance here through the sides, I can check it and I can see that it is two inches, okay? So it's two inches long. So then what I'll do is I'll bring that out, measure, and then I can cut it and make sure that I'm getting the perfect balance all the way through. All right, so my distribution, my elevation. So distribution is the way you comb hair. Elevation is the way I'm elevating. All right, I'm elevating it out at 90. My distribution and elevation just straight out from the head at 90. Okay, I'm happy with that balance, okay? That's my first sections done. Everything out straight from the head at 90 degrees. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna work with an inverted graduation. So what that means, I'm gonna come off the base now. All right, so I'm gonna work vertical through the front. I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna over direct now to that top of the ear. So all the hair now is over directed to that first section I cut, all right? Because we have a lot of different people watching from all over the world and all different um, experience. You know, I know we've got a, a, um, a couple of students watching as well. And uh, so what I would suggest, you could take a couple of sections if you wish, vertical, and you pull it off the base to that first section. If you're an experienced hairdresser watching and time is money and you like to be quick behind the chair and you can do a haircut in like 30 minutes, 20 minutes, guess what guys? You can get that guideline and you can pull all the hair to that one guideline in one go. But if I was teaching this to younger students, then I would say, look, maybe take a couple of sections to make sure you see your guideline. So you can see, look, I'm coming off the base. So I'm combing away from the face, combing away from the face. All right, so my distribution and elevation is changing. Yeah, it's not 90 anymore. It's 90 to over-directed. Okay, and what that means is I'm over directing, I'm coming off the base and I'm going longer towards the face. 
So what I'll do now, just over direct, over direct to that stationary guideline. And where the stationary is, is the top of the ear. So everything comes to the top of the ear and you comb that down and straight away on a profile, you can start to see it's shorter going longer. All right, so it's going longer towards that face, okay? So it's a little bit more of a lived in pixie, okay? Right, so you've done that. If you want to, you can alternate. If you prefer to, you can alternate. What that means, you can go now to this side and pull it off the face. Why not? So I like you get, get all that hair, over direct it. So my distribution elevation, 90, to over direct. So we'll come into the top of the ear, all blunt, working palm to palm. So working palm to palm. Okay, drop that down. All right, so you've done all that. If you're a cross checker and you love cross checking and you're like, you know what, I like to be very technical with my work, then cross check it. Just cross check it on a diagonal, okay? Just think about your sectioning pattern. Yeah, your sectioning pattern is on a diagonal working with your triangle. So you could literally cross check it. And if you cross check it, what should it be looking like? It should be longer on the front and shorter at the tips of my fingers. So when I elevate this out, that's what it's gonna be looking like. It's gonna be going from shorter to longer, okay? So look, if I elevate, if I just literally do a cheeky little cross check, and you can start to see straight away, yeah, it's shorter, going longer, okay? It's nice to cross check, nice just to always have a, a cheeky look. Not a lot of people cross check live, doing on lives. <laughs> Not a lot of people are on uh, cross check off camera, but it's kind of nice to, uh, to show you. All right, so we've done the front. So now we're gonna go into the back, behind the ear, okay? So we're gonna go behind the, uh, the back. We're gonna stop where, the, put, the, where the, uh, the triangle goes down. So you see where the triangle goes down behind the ear? I'm gonna carry that triangle down into the back there, and we'll ignore the nape. We'll ignore that nape area, all right? If you want to, get a clip and just clip that out the way, all right? And you're just concentrating behind the ear. Okay, so you're going to follow that triangle parting all the way down to the nape. Okay, and what you're going to do now, you're going to come off the base and you're going to pull everything to the top of the ear. All right, so what we're trying to achieve here, guys, is a concave feeling. Concave meaning shorter, concave in longer. So it's longer towards the face and guess what? It's going longer towards the back. So I'm still working that palm to palm. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to re-establish the, the middle. You can throw that front bit out of the way, you know. Keep your cleaner sections, cleaner work, okay? Always be nice and clean, all right? So you're coming off the base now, coming off the base, all right? And then you see that guideline nice and clear. So you're over-directing, everyone can see on that, all right? We're over-directing everything to the top of the year. <laughs> All right, top of the ear. Everything's going to the top of the ear. All right, so you're bringing that right over, top of the ear, all blunt, okay? If you prefer to, and if it was a little bit longer, so if I was working on a little bit of a longer shape than this, you could point cut it. If you were working a little bit longer, you could even use a razor, all right? A little bit more lived in, a little bit more grown out. All right, because of the length we're cutting this mannequin, I thought we'd use the smaller scissors, from Edge, these are the 6.25s from our Edge Academy section. So we thought we'd use them because when I'm blunt cutting, I always prefer to use a smaller blade when I'm blunt cutting. And when I'm personalizing and customizing and maybe point cutting and stuff like that, I like to use a larger blade. So when I come to the top guys, I'll probably be using a seven inch scissor. All right, but as you can see now on a profile, that's the shape what you've done. You've taken it shorter at the top of the ear, you've over-directed to that guideline, and you've over-directed to that guideline, and straight away, you can see that beautiful concave shape, okay? And what that's gonna do, it's gonna sit flat, because when people grow their hair out, so if you've got a lady who's got a pixie or a crop, and she's trying to grow her hair out, and she feels like she's got a helmet on, and it feels like it's too heavy, 
If you take the weight out at the widest part of the head, which is at the top of the ear, then you over-direct everything to that stationary guide, okay? Uh, this is a great little haircut to do on someone who's growing their hair out, or you've got a client who has had a bob for a while, right? something like a classic bob, and she just wants to go shorter, but she doesn't want to go short, too short. Or if you've got a lady in the chair and she goes, I want to go short, but I don't want to go as short as a boy. I don't want to go, I don't want to look like a man's haircut. All right, so then you could do something like this, okay? A shaggy pixie. All right, so we carry that parting all the way down onto the opposite side. And then we're gonna over direct everything now to that stationary guideline, which is at the top of the ear. So look, you just bring everything to the top of the ear. Guess what guys, you just pull point cut, you just blunt cut through whatever reaches. all to the top of the ear. Okay. So if you're a little bit nervous of the front bit, comb that away, comb that front bit away. All right, you're going, you're not going to the front, you're going to the top of the ear. So this hair should be traveling to the top of the ear. All right, palm to palm. So distribution is 90 to over-directed. We're over directing, we're coming off the base now. We're coming off the base, what does that do? It makes it go longer. All right, the hair's going longer now. And where's it going longer? It's going longer behind the ear. Okay. So then I come to check on the sides and you can start to see the same, same idea. Okay. Very good, very good. Okay, uh, so literally we've done all the sides. That's the sides completed, all right? So you can see on a mannequin how it's sitting nice and flat already. All right, it's sitting lovely and flat, this. So it's shorter at the top of the ear, over direct off the base, over direct off the base. If you cross check this horizontally, it's gonna be concaved. It's longer at the front and longer through the back. All right, so it's concaving. That's what you're looking for, all right? So what you're gonna do now, you're gonna do the back. Okay, so you're gonna go into the nape, the nape area. All right, so we comb all that down now, and we've got the nape. And this is where you can customize this freedom with, uh, with creativity work. Some of you might leave that, you could leave that, you could bring all that over-directed, and you could have a little mullet. You could leave this all out, and you could rock a little mullet, it's kind of cool. If you felt like, no, she doesn't want that, it's too heavy, all right? You could cut all this off and take this shorter, yeah, and you could literally carry on on the base if you wanted to take something shorter. In this case, we're still going to work with a concave feeling. So we're going to work right through the center. All right, so right through the center, we're going to work a vertical section right through the center as wide as my comb. So I'm going to work that all the way through. And why I'm doing it concave again is where's the widest part of the head through the back. Right, think about the head structure. Not everybody has an occipital bone. Some people have a flatter head shape. Some people have a, a really strong head shape. So if I look at this mannequin on a profile, if I put my comb, say for example, vertical or horizontally, and I work it all the way to the head, where's it gonna hit the head first? It's gonna hit the head in the middle. All right, it's gonna hit here first because the head starts to curve round and curve round. So usually your comb would hit where the occipital bone would be, all right? So if someone's got a strong occipital bone, you could take it shorter within the middle and then you're gonna come off the base, come off the base and it's gonna sit a lot flatter through the back, okay? So that's what we would do. All right, so we're gonna literally work through the back now. The back doesn't have to be the same length as the sides. So if you've got a client who says, I like to leave a bit more length at the back, you could make up this guideline in the back and how short you take the first section is honestly up to you. The sides will have to be balanced because the client will see that in the mirror. She will be blow drying her hair on one side longer, one side shorter. She won't be impressed. But with the back section here, it doesn't have to be the same as the two sides. It could be a little bit longer. It could be a little bit shorter. It all comes down to customization 
your consultation, your client's likes, your client's dislikes. In a way, as a hair, hairdresser, you're customising a haircut to suit the client's face shape, yeah, her hair, her head, her lifestyle, yeah, her density of hair. So in a way, as a hairdresser, we're like a plastic surgeon because we can make somebody look amazing and if we don't like them, we can make them look bloody awful. <laughs> All right, so your distribution on your first section, palm to palm. So everything out 90, 90. So my distribution, the way I'm combing the hair is 90 degrees. So my first section was 90 off the base. Now I'm gonna over direct to that guideline. So palm to palm, I'm gonna over direct. So I'm gonna over direct all that hair. When I'm over directing, I'm using the larger teeth, yeah? So when, I've, when I was cutting the first section, I used the finer teeth. When I'm over directing, I'm using the larger teeth. We're gonna be more hair in the comb. All right, so I'm just keeping that all into the middle, okay? Push that opposite side out the way. If you're a bit nervous, just clip it out the way. Personally, clips are the hardest things to find in a hair salon. You go to work with three clips, you come back with maybe one or none. All right, so if you've got a few clips, don't be afraid of clipping hair out the way. Clean at work, clean a haircut. Yeah, you don't have to cross check and check it all the time and you make mistakes. Okay, so you've come off the base and you've over directed everything into the middle. And guess what? I'm going to change my body position now. I'm going to go over to the opposite side and I'm going to over direct the hair. So, body position is really important. My posture. So, I'm coming off the base. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to come off the base now and I'm going to work into the middle. So, just to recap it, guys, the underneath is basically a a vertical graduation, but it's concaved, all right? So there's three concave shapes, all right? So you've got a concave through the sides, you've got a concave through the back, all right? And what does that do? It makes it sit flatter because the whole point of this haircut is a grown out pixie or a lived in pixie or a shaggy pixie. So you've got ladies who come in and they say, well, I want short hair, but I don't want to cut it all off. Or I'm a little bit nervous. All right, so then you could do something like this kind of shape. Okay, right. And then move that around and you can start to see how that's looking nice on a profile. And then looking through there, and you'll be able to see you've got longer pieces through here. It's gonna sit a lot flatter. Guess what guys, I'm gonna dry it now. It's disconnected the top and the fringe, okay? The crown's gonna be layered and the front is a fringe, all right? So what we're gonna do now, we're just gonna get a hair dryer. I'm gonna dry that off. Let's get it absolutely perfect. All right, so because it's short, just use your comb and you dry that through. Paul Smith, how are you Paul? Great educator watching. How are you my friend? Fabulous as always, thank you. We keep trying. <laughs> All right. But uh, yeah, while I'm drying guys, we've got lots of things happening within Edge Academy. We've got lots of classes. All our classes are online if you want to look and see when, when they are. We've got classes online, in person, in different salons around San Diego. Uh, if you want to know more about our classes, we can send you an educational brochure where it's got all the prices and everything else like that in it. If you want to know a little bit more about our academy. But yeah, we've probably got about three or four classes every month at the moment going on. It's all about education. Sharing is caring. All right, so you're just blasting that through. Dry that off. If you prefer, you could use a brush. Yeah. If you've got a client, if you've got a bit of length in there and you think, mm, you know what, I'd actually like to use a brush. 
You could use like a little round brush there. Yeah, and get that nice and smooth and polished. For me, the product is key. Making sure you've got a good product in there. If you're using a volumizer, or you're using a smoothing cream or lotion, you know, what sort of product choice are you going to use? Because your haircut looks great, but how can I make this haircut look even better? Colour. Product. Yeah? So, placement of colour would be great. And then also a nice product in there. Alright, so we dried that off. Just using the nozzle really in the comb. Using the nozzle, the comb, get all that nice and smooth. I don't want to be too long drying it and boring you up. <laughs> Alright, and then what we're going to do now is literally we're going to go in and customise a little bit. Okay, so you can start to see the shape. You can start to see what, we've, what we achieved. Yeah, working from that kind of concave feeling. Right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to change my, um, my scissors. I'm going to go over to the old uh, sevens. These are the seven inches from Edge Academy. They're a larger blade, but they're really good for customising. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go in to the sides, and I'm going to go horizontally. And if you want to see that, look guys, let's, let's just show you. I love showing you a cost check anyway. So let's get that a bit closer like that. And if I go horizontally there, can you see it? I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can. So it's longer, going shorter. Shorter, going longer. So there you go. Beautiful kind of shape just to see. So if I can maybe lean over my camera so I'll be able to see kind of what I'm doing there. And literally what I'm going to do then, I'm just going to do some deep point cutting. Just break that up a little bit, okay? So I'm just going to go in horizontally. Don't destroy it, all right? Remember it's longer in the front and longer in the back. Don't start going in and chopping into it too much. You think you can see it? I can see it perfectly, that little concave shape, beautiful. All right, so again, what you see and what I see are always going to be slightly different. That's why it's called customization, all right? So you can customize, all right? So. But well, some of you might go, yeah, I want to go crazy, all right? Um, if you've done a really good job and it's all clean and it's all balanced, you don't need to ruin it. All right, so just a little bit of deep point cutting. But again, this is freedom. So everyone's choice is different. Some of you get carried away. Some of you might not want to do any of this. All right, okay, and it's all from your consultation. Does the client like it a bit more choppier? All right, and then you go into the back, and we'll go into the back, and we'll do the same through the back area. We'll go horizontal, and you can start to see, shorter in the middle, longer on the outer edges, so you've created that lovely concave feeling. Okay, so deep parallel point cutting, going parallel with the blade, not cutting anything off the actual structure the length you put the foundation in okay then you're going to go out to the perimeter now all right so if you have a client who likes it a bit wispier and a bit softer onto the face okay so you bring that forward yeah and you just take off a little bit of the front so again point cut through there if you look at that and you think i want to carve that off i want to cut that completely off it's a different technique guys because the technique is to create length at the front and length behind the ear, all right? So if the client says, I don't like it on my face, I hate, ha I hate it when it's longer through the front, then don't do this technique, okay? Because this technique is meant to be left longer at the front. So then if you've got a client and she wants a bit of softness, you can just go in and do some deep point cutting. Yeah. She doesn't have to wear it forward, she can still wear it down, but there is an element of softness through that front, okay? And the ear, you know, just tidy up ever so slightly. And then how short you go over the ear? Well, we've decided that already because of the graduation. We wanted just to see maybe an earring. If the client says, I want to go shorter and I wanted this area above the ear, she wanted this area above the ear, maybe above, and you could see all the ear, then guess what, guys? Your first section you cut is the shorter. The shorter you go with the first section, the more you're exposing of that ear. Yeah? So if the client turns around and goes, I want it above the ear now, 
Well, you can go back in and take that shorter, the graduation, yeah, and then open up the ear more, okay? So in this case, it's a grown out pixie. So I can just literally just break that up a little bit on the perimeter, just to have it a little bit more grown out, okay? Right, so we'll do exactly the same on the opposite side. Good thing about these mannequins, you just spin them around. <laughs> All right. All right, so I'll just at the front now, bring that forward onto the face, and we'll just tidy up that front hairline. Again, just a little bit of point cutting. Not too short, because you'll lose the length. Never, don't try not to switch off. Always remember, like, you've left areas longer and you've left areas shorter with this haircut. The shortest area, yeah, is at the top of the ear. The longest area, yeah, is going to be behind the ear. Okay. And then, if you want to open that up a little bit more, just go there, just break that up a little bit there on the ear. That's the sides done. We bring that forward. You can check your balance, check your balance, check your balance through the perimeter. Always check your balance. It's always good to check. Okay. Then your final bit at the back. Yeah. Right, so what we're gonna do now, we wanna make this a bit more interesting through the back. So we want to make it a little bit concave, the perimeter at the same time. So we're gonna pop ahead slightly forward, okay? And then we'll literally work with a little concave hairline. All right, so I'm just gonna take it a little bit shorter in the middle. And we'll just keep that perimeter, the same kind of idea we did with the uh, with the graduation. Okay, so when you work in the hairline, always think about how the client's hair is going to sit. Are you working on wavy hair, curly hair? Yeah, how's it going to sit? Is it going to sit flat? Is it going to stick out? You know, sometimes do it's always good and personally on a real client to do the hairline when it's dry you can start to see where it's going to move to, left, right. Is it going to ping up and stick up? Have they got a strong hair growth pattern? Are the hairline really strong? Is it a high hairline, low hairline? Okay. And then we'll just go in and keep that nice and soft as well. The whole point of this haircut was a little bit more lived in. So a little bit more broken up on those ends. And you've got like longer pieces just behind there. It just gives it a little bit of interest through that back. Between the neck. <laughs> right. So, yeah, everybody, look, quite a lot of people tuning in today, which is good. You know, thanks for tuning in, guys. I really appreciate the love and support. All right. So, you can see that a little bit of concave working through. Right. So, now you can see on a profile that's sitting nice and flat. Yeah. Because then it's pushing the hair longer and then sitting flat and it's pushing the hair longer. Okay, that's all the underneath finished. So I've only got two more bits to do and the whole haircut is finished. Okay, so we take the crown out. All right, so what we've got here now is above the triangle, yeah, which is the crown. And then we've got a parting, remember, from ear to ear. So we've got this crown section now. All right, so you just take the crown out, keep this clipped up. All right, we're just doing the crown now. I'm gonna stay with my sevens, why? I'm gonna layer now, I'm gonna layer. What does layering do? It takes that weight, but also gives a lot of texture and also creates volume. All right, so we wanna create a bit more volume within this haircut. All right, so I'm gonna lift it out from the base at 90 and I'm gonna work following the head shape. So if you're not sure what 90 is from the head, get your comb, put it flat on the head and there's 90. All right, if, I, if my comb comes off the head, yeah, so there's 90, but then there's 90, and there's 90, okay? Put, put, keep the comb flat on the head, you'll be able to see your perfect elevation. Large T for the comb, elevation distribution 90 from the head, and uh, nothing too crazy really through the top. I'm just gonna point cut it through, and a round layer or a uniform layer. Okay, so how short you take this layer, comes down to your consultation. The shorter the layer, the more volume you're gonna create. It's disconnected, okay guys? 
So it's disconnected. It's not connected through from the underneath. So we're creating like a little disconnection. Then we'll guess what? We're going to cover direct everything into the middle. So we're still keeping that feeling of a concave. So look, everything now is combing into the middle. Into the middle. Okay, so I'm just combing everything into that middle section. Okay. And then you're going to have a little bit of interest through that side. Okay, we do exactly the same on the opposite side. All right, so we establish the middle. My distribution elevation is 90 to over direct. So it's 90 over direct into the middle. See the guideline? Nice and choppy. When you're doing something choppy like that, keep it away from your fingers. Otherwise, you give your clients three red highlights and loads of band-aids. Alright, so be really careful when you point cutting. And then when you come to cut, when you come to check that, I know it's dark hair and we're on a screen, but you might not be able to see it, but there's longer pieces here and it's shorter going longer. So I think you can see that, like when it's falling over there, you can see that was like longer pieces just falling there, guys. Yeah. This is really nice because then if you're a colourist and you're a creative colourist, this is a lovely haircut to colour. Alright? I uh, trust me. Um, I've not coloured hair for 35 years. The last time I coloured hair was through a highlighting cap. All right, so luckily my wife does all our colours, or we have a, you know, a couple of girls who work at the academy, and they uh, you know, do the colours for us in the, uh, for collections and stuff. But for me, you know, like, this is really nice, because you've got like, some fun areas, you know, nice colour placements. All right, so just to recap the crown, it's 90 off the crown, over-directed, over-directed, into the middle to create a concave. Right, so now is our final section, through the fringe. And guess what we're gonna do through the fringe? The most popular thing you hear behind the chair at the moment, a curtain bang, okay? So we're gonna do a curtain bang through the front, all right? So we're basically gonna have a curtain bang all the way through. So each element is basically an inversion. When you think about this whole haircut, You've took an area shorter at the top of the ear, you've inverted all the hair to that guide. You've took an area in the middle of the nape and you've inverted all that hair to the middle of the nape. Now you've gone to the crown and you inverted everything into the middle. And that's what we're going to do exactly the same through the front. Alright, so we go up centre. We split it into three sections. I've taken my time because obviously I'm educating today. But say, for example, guys, this was in a salon situation. This is pretty quick, yeah? Because you think about it, one section, bump. One section, bump. One section at the side, bump. You know, how quick is it for the experienced hairdressers who are watching this? This is quick, all right? This is money-making, all right? This is a money-making haircut, trust me. It's short hair. She's got to come back every six weeks with this haircut, yeah? This haircut looks okay when it grows out, but guess what? It looks better when she maintains it, all right? Add some color in there, sell her some product. Wow, how much money have I made behind the chair that day? Color, products, haircut. See you in six weeks for another haircut. See you in 12 weeks for your next color. This is money, all right? And that's what Edge Academy is all about, is sharing haircuts that we can do behind the chair. There's no shaved sides, there's no lines in there, there's no kind of weird hairdressing. And that's what, we're, what we do at the academy. We do hair, what we'd want to do behind the chair, okay? So what you're gonna do here now, we're gonna literally work from the guide. We're probably gonna use that front, that top bit. We're probably gonna connect the, uh, the top in. So we'll connect the top in. All right, so I see that short bit there. We'll connect that in. We'll probably use it like a round layer technique. We'll just connect the top, the crown, in with the top, and then we'll follow the head round. The head's round, so that means it's going to be 90. It just doesn't come square. So if you've noticed there, it's rounded. So it's 90, and then it's 90 this way because the head's rounded. So you're in a way you're doing like a round layer all the way through the middle. All right, so a little center section. We're opening up that front section a little bit more, okay? we want to have it shorter in the middle and longer on the outer edges okay so what you do now you grab all that hair and guess what the hair what's dry is not going to reach anyway this hair underneath is not going to reach and then you're going to literally over direct 
all the hair up to that guide. Okay, so all that hair now travels. You're just over directing into the middle. Okay, even past the middle, if you want it more of a curtain bang, you can go past the middle if you prefer. The more you over direct, the more length you're maintaining. So if the lady wants a bit more of a curtain bang or she wants it more disconnected and wants more of an undercut feeling, over direct it more. Okay. Think about the density of the hair. If you're working on someone with really, really thick hair, then you might want to leave this top longer because undercutting is fantastic for thicker densities because you're taking out the weight underneath and you're leaving some length on the top so the hair's going to sit flatter. Okay. And what you do then, you just over direct. I can remove a little bit on the old Instagram. Okay, just put that like that. All right, and then we're just literally over directing all that into the middle. So everyone can see that. Get everything into that stationary guideline. Okay. And then we drop that down. And I think you can see it guys straight away. Like, I think you can see that even before detailing the fringe. Yeah, before we've even customized the fringe or anything, you can start to see what you've done. So what we're gonna do now, I'm just gonna get a hairdryer. We'll dry that top off now. And then you just detail wherever. This is a lovely little haircut. We've just been playing around with it in our academy for the last few uh, weeks. Uh, we've been doing it on some clients. Uh, it's really nice on curly hair. If you have a lady with like naturally curly hair, it's a great little technique to do. Yeah. Probably use a round brush. Got a big old brush here. Got a bit of length there. So let's just get a bit of use a round brush if you want. We've got time to blow dry it. I think we're okay. Okay, we've not been going an hour yet or anything. We're not going to get cut off. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys. I really appreciate it. Like I said, we'll, we'll repost it, this haircut. So then, if you've got any friends who want to watch it, you know, please share it on your pages. Please share the video. And we'll, uh, you know, you can share it with your friends. If you've got a client that comes in this week, and she's got a pixie, or she's got a bob, and she wants to do something a bit different, she wants to grow a pixie out, or she wants to get away from the bob and do something a bit different. Maybe you could uh, you do this haircut, okay? A shaggy pixie. Give it a little flip on the sides. It's always nice. you can blast it through, you know, get it a bit lived in. Don't want it too perfect. Put your hands through it, break it up a bit. Okay, and then just a bit of detailing wherever necessary now guys. So I think it's obvious I want to break that fringe up a bit more. I'm loving what we've got going on. Fantastic cut. Thanks darling. Thank you very much. Thanks for the class. Thank you so much, guys. So nice for all your love and support. I'm always about, you know, sharing is caring. And uh, I know we have our members page where we do a lot of our videos now. Uh, we have a members club. So if you've never seen us do haircuts before, we do haircuts every month on our members page. It's $75 and you get free haircuts uh, to watch whenever you want. And we also do an online class. So if any of you, like you like the haircuts we've done, and you're like, I'd love to see him do more. 
Then we do a members club where we do all our haircuts now online. Um, or, you know, once a month I try and do a, a Facebook or Instagram kind of cheeky haircut for you all to share. But like, you can just literally customise that fringe a little bit more, opening up a little bit more in that fringe. So maybe just a little bit more open up in the middle. And you're still keeping that real nice curtain feeling to it. Uh, I still like that kind of curtain bang. Break it up a bit if you want to, just a little bit of slicing here and there. Customising is again, honestly up to you. What you see and what I see are always going to be different. finished guys um, really thank you so so much for tuning in what we've done today is a grown out shaggy pixie um, you know with a little curtainy bang going on I'm just using my uh, my screen as a mirror <laughs> all right so again it's a little bit more lived in if you want to put some product in there it'll probably look better so you put, get like a little paste or something and work that through, that'd be nice. A little bit of a paste would break that up even more. Okay. So for the guys, if you've just literally just tuned in and you missed the haircut, you can watch it again on our, on our uh, social media platforms. And, uh, but just to break it up, it's just literally broken up into a triangle, a triangle through the back and a triangle on the opposite side. Shorter at the top of the ear and over-directed. Shorter in the nape and over-directed. Same on the opposite side. And then for the top, we work rounded all the way through and then over-direct everything into the center. So we create that kind of little curtainy bang all the way through. It's a little bit more lifting. Uh, it's really salon friendly, yeah? If you've got a lot of clients who love this kind of shape. Um, you know, if I put that against the wall now, you know, I think that's definitely uh, a money maker. All right, so I've just got the screens there for everybody. All right, but uh, if you want to see more from Edge, you can be uh, one of our members at Edge Academy. Uh, so it's edge74.com. You can join our membership program. We have classes here every month in San Diego. So if you're in San Diego, come down, do a one day, two day class. Uh, and also, if you're a salon owner and you feel like, oh, I'd love to get this guy to come into my salon, we are doing in-salon education now, all right? So we are offering some classes all the way through as well that way. All right, so that's the kind of the shape, what we've done, beautiful, all right? 